We're going to begin this morning in Hebrews chapter 11, uh, and we're going to start reading in verse 24. By faith Moses, when he called, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ of greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had recompense unto, or he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. So in this chapter, we've talked about these uh, elders that obtained a good report by doing these works of faith. It's a chapter uh, that, that shows uh, the many examples of those uh, of faith with these believers. And as we saw uh, in several places, we saw that uh, God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And that's uh, the walk of faith, the, the faith in action. It's a chapter showing faith in a action of these believers who had a good report. Um, their testimony uh, proved them to be faithful servants of God Almighty. And they understood God would reward them for their faithfulness. Uh, reward is given to faithful servants and faithful children in throughout the Word of God. So reward is not something that in this dispensation of grace that we we don't have a promise of reward as believers because there are several passages in Paul's epistles that mention reward and different aspects of that reward for believers in this dispensation of grace. Uh, we are God's children, but God's faithful children serve Him. And we've looked uh, at some uh, various passages uh, in uh, throughout Paul's epistles uh, to see that with regard to faithful works like we see the saints here in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 they're, they're believers who God, many of them God asked to do something specific like Noah and, and Moses and others like them, Abraham and those specific things are of course not works that we need to repeat in order to be faithful to God but in our dispensation, we have our, the Apostle Paul uh, says the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Apostle God gave commandments through Paul for us to obey. And so there are, we've looked uh, over the weeks, there, uh, there are different um, uh, terms that we've seen uh, that express faithful works. Um, and um, like uh, being a servant, uh, labor, labor for believers in this age of grace, work for believers in this age of grace. We are ministers. And we've seen by definition that a minister, uh, you know, uh, servants serve the Lord. So believers in this dispensation of grace are those, uh, are servants because we serve the Lord. We don't serve the God of this world. We don't serve our flesh as our master. We walk in righteousness as servants of the Lord. Um, so we are servants, although we are sons. And there's a difference between serving the Lord as a son or a child of God and a servant that is a slave that is uh, forced into labor. There is a difference, and the difference is the, the children of the Lord, like the Lord is called God's servant, uh, in the Old Testament, we, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross, and that he served as the perfect Son of God out of love. Love for the Father is what motivated him to serve the Lord. Uh, we know in time past, under the law program, uh, that the children of Israel were to serve the Lord, and God commanded them under the law that they should love him with all their heart, mind, and soul. God has always desired faith to serve him uh, or service to be to uh, respond to his mercy and grace and, and serve him out of love and mercy uh, for his love and mercy. So uh, service is never by God to be begrudging. Uh, he, he never wanted somebody to, for example, there, there's a lot of rebuke in the Old Testament for them bringing sacrifices to him without the heart being right. So without a heart of faith, without a love responding to God and, and gratitude, 
Um, he didn't want the sacrifices just to fill up, you know, the uh, area where they sacrificed with blood. That didn't please him just to see slaughter. What he wanted was a, uh, a broken and a con contrite heart. He wanted to see uh, true um, repentance and uh, true sorrow to bring that sacrifice. So, um, so we've seen that uh, as servants, we serve the Lord. Uh, as laborers, uh, we labor. As ministers, we minister. And we looked at, by definition, a minister is a chief servant. And we've seen by definition that a, a, a minister can be a term for applied an agent appointed to manage business under the authority of another. So we minister, we represent God. As ambassadors, uh, we represent a foreign government, uh, the government of God Almighty in this earth. We're his ambassadors, his ministers. We're all servants of the Lord. We're all expected to be ministers and servants. Um, we're all expected to be ambassadors, each one of us. We're all expected to contribute to the preaching of the gospel and the study of God's word rightly divided. We all have a part in that ministry. Uh, that ministry can, um, uh, we can all uh, give our testimony to someone how we got saved. That's the most sim simple way to share the gospel is that you give a testimony of what you trusted. No one can deny that what you trusted and what you believed and that you're saved. That is something that your history that you can share with others that has an impact on other people uh, who will uh, appreciate your personal testimony. We can all hand out tracts. We can promote uh, our local assembly where we come and, and we have fellowship around the gospel and the fellowship around God's word. Uh, and uh, so we can promote uh, our local assembly. We can um, support and encourage. Uh, you know, if you, uh, we, as many of us as believers, not all of us have the same uh, uh, gifts or, or, if you will, talents or uh, abilities or desire to do the, uh, for example, to get up front and preach. But in supporting uh, your pastor and in supporting the elders in your church and supporting with your attendance the other believers in this assembly, you are ministering to the, to the rest of us. Your, no one's uh, participation in a local assembly uh, is not ministry in some way. Uh, encouraging each other, talking to each other, and, and you know, there's all types of encouragement that, that believers and we need from each other. And so that is a ministry to encourage uh, one another. Um, and of course, we can pray for one another and uh, we can share uh, with one another. There's su the support, financial support of the ministry. And supporting a ministry and attending that ministry where the Word of God is taught rightly divided is work, it's labor, it's ministry, it's something that each one of us do. Uh, we, we study God's Word at home, we read it. it, we renew our minds daily, we let the Word of God uh, give us uh, a desire to do the work and to share the gospel and, and all that we do. So we're all expected to do the work of the ministry, we're all expected to labor, we're all expected to serve the Lord uh, as His children. Um, I want you to turn with me to um, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians 4 and verse 29. Ephesians 4, 29. Let, this is a commandment for everyone. The Ephesian church, there's, uh, this is to regard, this isn't written to pastors or preachers to do this only, but he says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Anything, anytime we have opportunity to have conversation, we, you know, we've given our testimony, they know we're a believer, uh, our friends and everybody that we know, and then they are going to judge by your communication whether you are a faithful servant or if you say something that shocks them knowing that you are a professing believer, 
you know, we shouldn't. That's Paul's point here. And he begins, this is part of chapter 4, where he commands us uh, in verse 22 that we put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of our mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. We put on who God's made us in Christ, and at part of that, uh, he gives commandment then to put off this sinful behavior and put on godly behavior, and that's where that we find the verse about communication, the, the, the things that we say, uh, the things that we talk about. It's everything we say should encourage or edify. Edify just means to build up. Is it edifying? And we, we need to consider what our conversations are about. Is it edifying? Are we encouraging uh, the person we're talking to uh, with the things that we talk about? Um, go to 2 Timothy now, chapter 2. So we're just reviewing now. Um, there are two words that, that we're going to look at, and let's go to 2 Timothy 2 first. But we've already studied through uh, most of these terms and gone through these passages together. 2 Timothy 2, this is kind of a summary of all that we've been, this message is trying to tie everything together that we've talked about as far as uh, the, uh, the sanctification, the walk of the believer, the acts of faith. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 24 says, the servant, we're all servants, all believers, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, what? Apt to teach and patient, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves that God would peradventure give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. When we share right division, we're, we're to do that with meekness. We're to be all to be apt to teach. That's an ability that we all can have. We may not all be preachers. We may not all be uh, uh, writers. We may not be able to write a book about the doctrine that we believe and understand. But we should all study to be apt to teach. We can, we can all find two or three verses that show right division, the importance of it, the advantage of it and share those things with others, especially with social media, being able to post a verse and show, share with others a verse that makes an impact on you, that, that helped you uh, with, the, with the issues of the gospel or understanding the right division. So we're all to be apt to teach and patient, and we're not to strive, we're to be gentle unto all men. So there's the Spirit, uh, fruit of the Spirit should be born. We should uh, be demonstrating grace in, in our conversation. Uh, but we should be, uh, we're all servants, according to that verse, and others, many others like it. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 now, verse 58. Um, there are two words, I noticed that the word labor occurs 12 times in Paul's epistles. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Now that verse actually has two words that, were, that, that help us to see the works of faith and the importance of the works of faith that we do. This is talking about the work of the Lord uh, and that being labor is, uh, is, is our service for the Lord. It's um, all Ministry is labor. It's all work. All ministry is putting off the old man and putting on the new man. It's new man behavior. It's being an example of the believers. And again, it's saying the things that are going to edify uh, others. And so, t uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 now. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 5, verse 9. Whether we, wherefore we labor, that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 
uh, is talking about we're motivated in the first part of the chapter, and, and we looked at this last week. We started and we, we spoke of the fact that 2 Corinthians chapter 2 all the way through chapter 5, Paul is talking about the, the subject of being motivated to serve the Lord. And we're motivated by the fact that we have, we know we have a body which is in heaven, which is our, our resurrection body. The Lord comes down at the rapture, the dead in Christ rise first, they receive their glorified uh, resurrection bodies, and those that are alive and remain are changed in the air. That's how we're going to receive. Uh, so we have that promise. And then he, he says, okay, now that you understand these things, as Paul does throughout uh, his epistles, he talks about blessings, and then he talks about the need for us uh, as God's servants to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Uh, we talked about a living sacrifice. Is the, the hard thing is it keeps wanting to crawl off the altar. We always need to renew our minds to re remind ourselves that we should put off the fleshly things that detract from our time and ability to serve the Lord, and we need to put on the behavior to serve Him. But this verse says, we, um, <clears throat> verse 9, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. That's the desire, the goal is to be accepted of the Lord. Now that, that term, that we might be accepted of Him, is a reference to our walk as believers, our sanctification, our practical sanctification. After we're made righteous in Christ and we're accepted in the Beloved, we should live in our lives, lives that are acceptable to Him. That uh, verse makes us, should make you think of 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself accepted unto God as workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, um, I'm sorry. The verse in 2 Timothy 2.15 is, show thyself approved unto God. And I keep mixing up accepted and approved in my thinking, but they mean the same thing. If you're being reviewed by God, as Paul mentions in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, we'll look at that. If you want to be acceptable, you want to be approved. Either one means that you're pleasing God and God's pleased with what labor or work that you've done. Look at uh, verse, okay, that's verse 9. Look at verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body. Now I want you to notice, we're going to read some verse, a few verses here, not many in this chapter, but I want you to see that everyone, every man, this is not something that's given to just a few members of the body of Christ. This is every one of us. He said we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to, to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So this is a being approved or being acceptable having to do with the things that faith has done. Our faith has made us do. Our faith has given us the desire, more at, to do to serve him, to serve God out of thanksgiving, gratitude, and love. We, uh, we labor. Why? Uh, verse 10 says, uh, I mean, verse 11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. God is going to re review our works. We're not trying to do works to be approved uh, of men or people around us. Our, we're, we're seeking God's approval. And knowing the terror of the Lord, do you know what's going to happen to all unbelievers who don't uh, trust the gospel? who God hasn't made righteous in His Son, who haven't received the free gift of eternal life, they will face eternal judgment in the lake of fire. We know the judgment of the Lord. We know the judgment upon unbelievers. That judgment upon unbelievers is going to be terrible. We are going to witness that judgment. We're going to see the lost cast into the lake of fire. That should motivate each one of us to want to share the gospel with those that we don't think may have trusted it yet. And so God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God is a God of judgment and wrath, but that's why he took upon himself the judgment of the sins of all men so that his love and grace could offer salvation as a free gift. We have that understanding, and that's why we share the gospel, knowing the terror of the Lord.
So we don't fear God's judgment. We're not fearful of standing before God at the judgment seat of Christ and having something stripped away from us. The We, out of love and gratitude for what he's made us in Christ, or the righteousness we've made and the hope of, of resurrection life that we have, we want to serve the Lord out of love and gratitude to please him, to be accepted by him, to be approved by him. And he's going, going to reward that. Uh, so, uh, again, labor occurs 12 times in Paul's epistles. We've looked at a few of those verses just now. Um, go to 1 Timothy chapter 5. And we're going to look at verse 17. So, 1 Timothy 5, 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So the labor, the work, is an inner man work and labor. It's that which we do by faith. And when our inner man is built up by sound doctrine, word of God rightly divided, letting us know what the commandments of the Lord are, that we serve him according to sound doctrine, then there's labor that's associated with the work of the ministry. And... Uh, that labor is associated with the word and doctrine. So whether we labor as in studying to show ourselves approved unto God, or as workmen, workmen being the work involved the labor, we see throughout Paul's epistles, most of the acts of faith that he encourages us to do have to do with the word, with edification, with ministry, uh, with what you do with sound doctrine, with how you responded to God's word that he gave to you, entrusted to you, as a believer, how you responded to it and how you allowed it to work in you. Verse 18, For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of what? Of his reward. There's reward associated with us as believers above and beyond the inheritance of eternal life. And being joint heirs with Christ, there's labor that the Lord promises to reward. It, our apostle talks about reward. Uh, he says, uh, we know that serving the Lord, we don't do it in vain. There's reward. There's going to be a, a judgment uh, that we're going to appear before God. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. Now, Hebrews is not written to the church, the body of Christ. But it's, it's a book written after the cross work of the Lord Jesus Christ and admonishing the, the uh, little flock, the, uh, the kingdom saints, about their labor. And it says in verse 10, chapter 6, verse 10, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. That's how they were to be serving the Lord, is out of love. So they're, uh, God won't, he's admonishing them, God's not unrighteous. He's not cruel. He's not unjust. He's not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have showed toward his name, and that ye have ministered to the saints, and do minister. So ministry, having to do with edification, encouraging one another, what we do as believers, we can certainly apply that to us. That's what, uh, that's what it is to, to serve the Lord and to labor with love, is to minister in some way to the saints, and that ministry, again, minister means a chief servant. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and look at verse 5. So this is the passage, the judgment seat of Christ, that, that Paul writes uh, about to the, to the Corinthians to admonish them. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, reminding them that there's a judgment, that, that we will appear before the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat is what we know it as. And uh, verse 5, he says, Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? I remember, they had a problem with division among the people in the Corinthian church. But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave, what? To every man. We have this word uh, entrusted. It was revealed through the Apostle Paul, and it's in, it committed to each one of us. Each one of us has the burden and the responsibility to be ministers of what we believed even as the Lord gave to every man. We're all ministers. Look at verse 8. 
Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. We're all expected to labor because there's reward that's going to be given to each one of us what we, how we responded in faith to the message that God gave to us, gave to every man. Uh, look at um, verse 10. According, uh, well, verse 9. For we are God's laborers together with God. We are laborers together with God. So God doesn't just give us this labor and work to do of the ministry without help. He leads us with his spirit. He, uh, his word effectually works in us when we believe it. And it's God working in us to will and do of his good pleasure. We're laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. So God indwells us. We're his temple. He lives in us. We're the building and in our body. We have to use this body of flesh to allow his word to work in us and through us so that we can reveal Christ to others. Uh, verse um, 10, according to the grace of God which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. That judgment seat of Christ is going to be for every one of us. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. So there's no confusion in the language that Paul gives us as members of the church, the body of Christ. There's reward associated with the labor and with the work that's been entrusted to us to do, that God works in us to help us to do, and uh, it's consistent with the rest of his word. Go to Ephesians chapter 6 now, verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters, according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and, and singleness of heart, as unto Christ. Not with eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. So the Lord is going to reward our service. Colossians chapter 3, verse 22. Colossians 3, verse 22. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing the Lord. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily unto the Lord and not unto men. So we're to serve him, and we're knowing that, verse 24, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. So there's reward uh, that we're going to receive for service. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. There's another judgment, in particular, at the great white throne judgment, that those who've done wrong without faith will be cast into the lake of fire. And that's, I think, speaking toward that uh, judgment. <clears throat> so we're about out of time. We're going to go ahead and close here with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time that we could study together. We thank you for your precious word that, uh, that, that edifies us and builds us up and prepares us for the service that you'd have us to do. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.